This video demonstrates installation of the Cloud Engine 12800 series switches, a series of next generation data center core switches developed by Huawei. This series includes five models, namely CE12804, TE12808, CE12812, CE12804S, and CE12808S. These models are installed in the same way, and this video demonstrates installation of a CE12812 AC chassis. Components in a CE12812 chassis include power modules, LPUs, MPUs, CMUs, fan modules, SFUs, and a power distribution unit. Preparations. The chassis should be installed in a standard 12-inch cabinet or rack. You can use the guide rails delivered with the chassis or buy other guide rails that have enough load-bearing capacity to support the chassis. The cabinet must be at least 1,100mm deep. 1,100mm deep cabinet must have a single swing door at the front and back. Huawei recommends a 1,200mm deep cabinet. There should be a distance of 150 to 180 mm from the front mounting rails to the front door. The distance between the front and rear mounting rails is between 700 and 730 mm. Cabling space should also be considered when you select a cabinet. Cables are symmetrically routed from the left and right sides of the cabinet to leave enough space to route cables or optical fibers. An 800 mm wide cabinet is recommended. Select a cabinet with specific load-bearing capacity, depending on how many chassis will be installed in the cabinet. Here, each cabinet has one chassis installed. Two methods are available to power a CE12800 switch. One is to use a power strip and C19 straight female to PI angle male AC power cables. The other is to use a PDU and C19 straight female to C20 straight male AC power cables. The maximum input power of a CE12800's power module is 16 Ampere. Ensure that each socket on the power strip of PDU has a current rating of 16 Ampere. You need these tools during installation. Get them ready before the installation. Installation engineers must wear ESD clothing. To avoid damage to the chassis, use a pallet truck to move the product box to your equipment room or nearby before you unpack the chassis. Wear protective gloves when you're unpacking the box. Use a flathead screwdriver to erect the tabs on the box. Use an adjustable wrench and Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws that fix the chassis on the tray. Installation accessories are delivered with the chassis in the box. Including guide rails, labels, installation templates, tweezers for removing optical fibers, serial cable, fiber binding tape, floating nuts, ESD wrist tape, M6 screws, ground cable, and cable ties. First install floating nuts and guide rails. Use the installation template to locate the mounting positions of floating nuts and guide rails. Align recesses on the installation template with holes on the mounting rails, and keep the top edge of the template on a narrow interval between holes. Fix the installation template on the mounting rails and mark mounting positions of floating nuts and guide rails. Install floating nuts to the marked positions.
Adjust positions of the guide rails. Notice the L and R flags on the guide rails to ensure a correct installation position. Identify the left and right guide rails and the front and rear ends of each guide rail. Keep the front and rear ends of a guide rail on the same horizontal plane. If not, the rear mounting brackets cannot be completely attached to the mounting rails. Move the chassis into the cabinet. The chassis is heavy. To avoid personal injury, Use a pallet truck to lift the chassis onto the cabinet. Put the chassis on the guide rails. Or lift the chassis onto the cabinet by four people. Hold the handles on both sides to lift the chassis. Do not use any other handles on the front or rear of the chassis when moving the chassis. After the chassis is placed in the cabinet, one person holds handles at the rear of the chassis and pulls the chassis until the mounting brackets are completely attached to the mounting rails. Do not step on the interior bottom of the cabinet. Secure the chassis with M6 screws. Install chassis header and cable management frames. Put the chassis header on a flat plane. Identify the left and right cable management frames according to the L and R flags on them. Insert the left and right cable management frames into the left and right slots on the chassis header and fasten the screws on both sides with a screwdriver. Insert the chassis header into mounting holes on the chassis and fasten captive screws on the cable management frames. Install other left and right cable management frames on the chassis. Unpack the cards and install them in the chassis. Wear an ESD wrist strap or a pair of ESD gloves when you install cards. Do not touch a card with bare hands. When installing a card, push the card slowly into the slots along guide rails to protect components on the cards from collisions. When installing an MPU, hold the front panel with one hand and support the bottom with the other hand. Push the MPU slowly into one third depth of the MPU slot. Turn the eject levers 45 degrees outward and push the MPU until it is completely into the chassis. Close the eject levers. Then fasten captive screws on the MPU. Install LPUs in the same way. Then install SFUs at the rear of the chassis. Install power modules. Before installing a power module, remove the filler panel from the power module slot. Keep the side with the top flag upward when you install a power module. Hold handle of the power module with one hand and support the bottom with the other hand. Push the power module slowly into the slot along the guide rails. After the power module is inserted into the slot, gently pull the power module. If the power module is not pulled out, it has been installed properly. Do not press the green release button when you pull the power module. Connect ground cable. Connect the ground cable before other cables. The CE12800 chassis has two ground points at the rear of the chassis. Connect the dual hole lug of the ground cable to the ground points and the other end of the cable to the ground point in the cabinet. Use M6 screws to secure the lugs. Before connecting the power cable, attach temporary labels at both ends of the cable to identify number of the power socket it should connect to. 
Open the locking latch on the power socket. Insert the power cable into the power socket and close the locking latch. Power cables on the sockets must have a one-to-one -one mapping to the power modules installed. Route power cables from the left and right side separately, no matter if they are connected to the same power source or not. Make sure power switches on the switch and the power source are in off position when connecting power cables. Connect network cables and optical fibers. Before connecting optical fibers, install optical transceivers on the interfaces first. Pay attention to the correct method to install and remove an optical transceiver. Mark interface numbers on both ends of an optical fiber. Bind optical fibers into a bundle and route them along a fiber track. Bind optical fibers with binding tapes once every 250 mm. Use cable ties to bind optical fiber bundles onto the cable tray. Here is the method to install and remove other optical transceivers fibers and high-speed cables. 40GE optical transceiver. MPO to MPO fiber. MPO to 4 DLC fiber. QSFP plus to 4 SFP plus high speed cable. SFP plus to SFP plus high speed cable. QSFP plus to QSFP plus high speed cable. Refer to the hardware installation and maintenance guide to check whether the chassis has been properly installed. Make sure that all the power switches of the external power supply system and the chassis are in off position. The CE12804S switch has no power switch. Check after power on. To power on the switch, turn on the power switches of the external power supply system and the switch in sequence. After the switch is powered on, Check the indicators on the chassis header. If these indicators are in normal state, check indicators on carts, power modules, and fan modules. If indicators on the chassis header and power modules are steady green, the power supply is normal. If indicators on the carts and fan modules are slow blinking green, they are working normally. For a CE12804S or CE12808S, check the indicators on the MPU first. Other cautions to take. Follow the instructions to use tweezers. If your cabinet is not deep enough, remove the lower enclosure frame. The air filter door cannot be installed after the lower enclosure frame is removed. Loosen the screws at both sides of the lower enclosure frame and remove it from the chassis. After you complete the installation, clean the equipment room. CE5800, CE6800 installation. Finally, we will provide a brief procedure for installing CE5800 and CE6800 chassis. First, install the left and right guide rails. 
connect the ground cable before moving the chassis into the cabinet. Hold the chassis bottom with one hand, then insert the rear mounting brackets into the guide rails with the other hand. Then secure the chassis with M6 screws. 